Hey, welcome folks. I want to give a follow-up segment on a couple other papers that use persistent homology to measure local geometry. Okay, so this here is a picture of the arteries in the human brain. So the scientists were somehow able to, you know, extract these data points um, that are on arteries inside of, inside of the brain. Um, and you can see that you know, sometimes loops form in these arteries. Maybe they're not truly loops. Maybe your artery doesn't form up as a loop, but your artery wraps, you know, almost all the way around back towards itself, okay? So that if you thicken these data points, you might have this loop that forms. There's a lot of geometry here, right? Just all of this bending, twisting, etc. So the scientists did a classification task can we identify the 24-year-old brain versus the 60-year-old brain? All right. And sadly, my understanding is that as you age, your arteries recede a little bit. So you have less of this local twisting and warping and this you know, local branching. Um, basically, in the 24-year-old brain, you have all of these little flares and, and, and arteries, you know, sort of wrapping all over the place. And as you get older, I think those recede a little bit. And the largest arteries remain, but some of the smaller ones disappear. Okay, so if you grew balls around these data points and looked at the connected components or the one-dimensional holes, you might conjecture that you get more um, short one-dimensional holes for the 24-year-old brain. And by, by short, I mean, yeah, they might be these little holes that appear, but they get filled in soon afterwards. For the 60-year-old brain, maybe you expect fewer, fewer, uh, you know, small little holes that disappear soon after they are formed. All right, I'm gonna go off on a tangent on persistence barcodes versus diagrams, and then we'll come back to this image. I've been drawing in this class mostly persistence barcodes, but there's an equivalent representation called the persistence diagram, okay? So in a barcode, you know, I might have one dimensional homology and I might have a couple bars, okay? And these bars each have various birth times and they each have various death times. Right. So let's call this you know, birth one and death one because it's corresponding to the, the birth of the first bar and the death of the first bar. Yeah. In a diagram, you take each bar and you pop, oops, I did not want to do that. You take each bar and you plot it as a point in the plane, okay? So this bar that has birth B1 and death B1, we're gonna plot that as this point in the plane, E1 comma D1. And then let's see, this bar is born slightly later and dies slightly later. So it's X coordinate is slightly larger and it's Y coordinate depth is slightly larger. And then this bar is born two and so it's born in between the two and it dies much, much later. So it's up there. So why don't we color code these? You know, the red bar say appears here. The uh, green bar is born later and dies a bit later. So it's X and Y coordinates are larger. And then the purple bar is born in between the two and dies much, much later. And I'm sounding a little philosophical, but everything dies after it's born. So that means all of these points are above, above that line. So it's not a bad idea to think of these intervals as being picked up and laid down here you could do that if you wanted to, because the the length of the the length of these bars corresponds exactly to the um, the height 
of these points above the diagonal. And so you can think of short bars as points that are near to the diagonal, and you can think of long bars as points that are far away from the diagonal. So now I can complete our story. Here are the uh, zero, or sorry, the, the zero and one dimensional persistent homology barcodes for this 24 year old grain and the 60 year old grain. Okay, and you do see that there are a lot more points close to the diagonal in the 24 year old, year old grain than there are in the 60 year old grain. So this hypothesis actually checks out. You have more short one dimensional holes in the 24 year old grain, which give you all these points in the persistence diagram near the diagonal. And you have fewer 60 year old grain. Yeah. All right, so I think I'll end there. That's another example of a data set where folks are using persistent homology to measure local geometry. And they, they use this with success on machine learning tasks. They can identify one grain from the other. And this is also an introduction to uh, the difference between barcodes and diagrams and how you go back between them. Public questions. Thanks so much.